Hi everyone and welcome to the Run to Win show where we bring to you inspiring stories, experiences, information and trivia from interesting people who are a part of the running world. I am your host Vinny Achmira. Today's episode is a bit different in that today we are not talking to another runner or athlete or running expert but to someone who captures our efforts and performance during the race so we can look back at them and smile. Chris Parry is the managing partner at marathonphotos.com since 2005. Marathon Photos to most of us needs no introduction. They are the official photographers for almost 650 mass participation races and endurance sports events in over 35 countries. After a super successful career of around 30 years in advertising and marketing, Chris took up his passion to become a professional photographer and today he is firmly established as a leading one. As we are aware, most of the sports events happen at weekends. So what does a marathon photos photographer do with the rest of the week? Hmm. To answer this question, Chris created Plus One Photo Tours, a brilliant idea to take passionate amateur photographers to beautiful locations around the world and to show them some amazing scenery and culture while sharing technical and creative knowledge. We managed to find a wonderful spot very fascinating for a photo shoot to record this interesting audio conversation yes yes just for you so if you're curious about how your race photos get online and so quickly and what those ideal spots for the best pose are then tune in to this conversation Hi Chris, welcome to Run to Win and thank you for meeting me and talking to me today. It's a pleasure. Can you tell the listeners who you are, what you do and where you're from? I'm uh, Chris Parry, managing partner of Marathon Photos and have been so for about 13 years. My responsibility is for events in Europe, India and America. In total Marathon Photos has about 650 events and I look after about 250 of those events. My responsibility is organizing and arranging contracts with each of the event organizers so we have exclusivity for taking photos and video at each of those events because obviously we don't want competitors coming along and it then would then confuse runners if they had to go to two different places to visit their photographs. And those photographs are made live within 24 hours. How do you go about doing that? That's always been a curiosity with me that within a few hours of us having run the marathon we start hunting our pictures and then we find them, sure. you know, or we get an email from you. How do you manage to do that that quickly and know that this is for this particular runner? Okay, so we receive a database from the timing company, so as soon as the race is finished, they email us with a database. which tells me who you are what your bib number is what time you finished in what time you did past the 5k slot or the 10k spot or the 15k slot so we will have video cameras at different points on the course so we're videoing you as well and we use the timing to actually identify you from that with the photographs we identify you through your bib number so that's why it's really important to put the bib number on your front And if you put it on your back then we don't know who you are so you'll never find your photographs unless you have to then go into The super search. The super search is where we identify you through the clothes that you're wearing. So you can then go and search for yourself by saying I was wearing pink or blue or red or orange and I had short shorts, I had a hat, I had glasses, and then that finds your photograph. But the normal way is that we then email you with your direct link to your photographs. So you just click on that and it takes you to your photographs. The uploading of those images happens as soon as the race is finished and that goes to our server, which is then the id people who are in different parts of the world so as the sun comes up in different parts of the world we start they start identifying those photographs from the number the number then is identified against the runner because we know their name as well but we also have visual identification in terms of auto identification in terms of facial recognition as well so that helps us search much quicker so we can then be live within within at least 24 hours I think that's brilliant and that's quite a lot of work that goes in there and uh, I'm sure a lot of technology like you're saying with this visual identification uh, and all these gamut of things. What I wanted to understand was one you said that you get data of the runners from the timing company. What is the other kind of preparation that you do to sort of be ready for it? I mean, how do you know where to shoot and like do you fly down these photographers you're from London I believe. So do you fly down these photographers? How does that whole story work? Well, all the photographers are based in the city that we shoot in. 
So they know where each of the locations are. So if we say you need to go to Marine Drive, then they know exactly where Marine Drive is. Or if we tell them to go to somewhere else to the CST, then they know exactly where that is as well. In terms of where to shoot, obviously we're looking at for iconic backgrounds. So we need to make sure there's an amazing background, if we can, in the background of the runner's photograph. Because there's no point in shooting in a tree-lined road, because where is the tree-lined road? It could be in England, it could be in New York, it could be in Mumbai, it could be in Sydney. So we need to have something that says, this is Mumbai, or this is Delhi, or this is Bangalore. Um, so we then have a recce of the course to see where the best places are to shoot. We then brief those photographers and say, this is where you're going to be standing. This is what you've, the background you need to photograph against. That's a really interesting thing you've just told me because it sort of also gives perspective on where do I reserve my best smiles for <laughs> and the best pose for because you keep seeing photographers along the route and they could be amateur photographers mm. or even just people who've come to cheer for sure, you. And sure, sure. you keep doing all those different things and the different poses just to be able to ensure that you get your pictures out somewhere, which you may not even know has surfaced somewhere because you don't know how to sort of get it from those photographers. Sure. I think the next time, and this will be interesting to our listeners also, is that maybe they should deserve their best poses when they're around iconic well, structures. No, absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I mean, a lot of race organizers will actually put up signs saying, smile here as a photographer. But then that's a really good race organizer who's actually helping you with that. Okay, that's interesting. So where do you think it's easier to get good pictures, start line, finish line in the course when it's like... It, it depends on the distance of the race. If it's a dream run, <laughs> which unfortunately most Indians think a dream run is a marathon, but it's not a marathon. Um, but if it's a dream run, then there's nowhere other than the finish line to actually photograph. And that's very difficult as well because it's party time at the finish line when it's a dream run. Uh, I remember many years ago at Bangalore um, with the 10K... The organizers, unfortunately, put a band just before the finish line, which meant that the runners stopped and they were dancing before the finish line. So it was impossible to photograph them. But the, the best place is actually at the finish line to photograph. But if you have an amazing background like the Eiffel Tower or India Gate, then that's an amazing location as well to photograph at. You know, you earlier said that you use local photographers. Mm -hmm. How does that work out? How do you select them? Because I'm sure there'd be many who'd love to be a part of this. So. Sure. All of the photographers have to do a trial with us, which we do not pay them for because we don't know whether they're any good or not. If they pass that trial, working for us at an event, passing the trial means the best photographs, getting it in the best composure, the best background then they will then be used by, by us for many other events in India. Brilliant. So now what I'd also like to understand is, you know, you said iconic structures and you said mm -hmm. really good location. What else makes a perfect pick for you? What are the things you watch out for that tell you, Chris, that, okay, this is a great picture that we've got? I think, well, you said it earlier, smiling, um, but also the waving of the arms just to show, yes, I did it. But also, I was looking at some photographs yesterday of the um, the Sea Link because I was briefing some of the photographers about where I want them to be, and that one of them has got to actually lie down on the ground to photograph the runners as they come across the bridge. And there's some fantastic photographs where people are jumping up in the air, celebrating their endeavor, and that makes it just a fantastic photograph. So I've seen so many running pictures, and then there are some that stay with you. So is there any, any such picture or pose that is particularly your favorite? I think it's just the triumph of having competed in the race. It's, it's just showing that pleasure on the face of the runner is, is the best, best of all. Okay. And are there any particular pictures that you may have taken or seen in the course of all your 13 years since you've been with Marathon Photos that particularly either bring a tear or smile to your face even now when you think about it? Will Smith winning, or rather not winning, finishing in the Mar uh, the Havana Marathon in Cuba back in uh, December. That was just an amazing photograph to see him finishing and smiling, especially when he'd been partying till goodness knows when in the morning. Um, but that was a fantastic occasion. So what part did you like of that photo? Was it just too much of... Uh... I think it's just the fact that it's Will Smith. I mean, he was just... <laughs> <laughs> okay. He just looked amazing having having um, run finished the race. But I think also, you know, when you see a, an amazing elite like David Radisha finishing his run or, or uh, Elio Kipjogi finishing his run, it's just fantastic to see that passion and energy. 
in, in the finish line shot. Those are wonderful moments. Why running? As in, was there a particular reason why you stuck to running or took to running? Or why running? Why not any other sport? It's, it's not just running. Okay. It's any mass participation event. Any event where there's lots of people and they have a number. Okay. If they don't have a number, we can't identify them. So name some of those events. Uh, London Triathlon, which has got 10,000 participants in it. Uh, Ironman, which has got hundreds of thousands of uh, participants in those events. The Great North Swim, which has got 10,000 swimmers in, swim in the Lake District in England. The cycle rides, like Ride London, which has 25,000 cyclists in. So it's not just running. It's any mass participation event. If, for instance, th there's a huge religious event which happens in Arabia somewhere, where there's two million people. Now, if they had a number, of, I would yeah. go there to photograph them. Got it. Because I'm sure they would love to have a photograph of them at the event that they've attended, which is an extremely important event in their religious world. Wow, let's so, hope they are listening to the podcast <laughs> to get this so. idea. Let's hope so. Which has been your most interesting shot in your career that you've taken? To do with the world of running or, or any... Any picture since you've, you've been a photographer and you've taken oh, a I million see. photographs at least. Well, to be honest with you, as I'm sitting in Mumbai, the sunset over the ocean in, in Mumbai is just amazing. Just amazing. So that's one of my favorite photographs. Landscape photography is probably one of my favorite types of photography in, in the whole world. Although I love obviously taking photographs of runners and I still do so. The sunset in Mumbai is just amazing. At Marine Drive. At Marine Drive, <laughs> absolutely. Anything else that you'd like to tell our listeners about what you do at Marathon Photos or about what they should watch out for next when they're running? Any any particular anecdote that you can think of? I think when they when they enter a race, if there's an opportunity to make a comment to the race organizer, just say, use Marathon Photos. <laughs> okay, that's very clever <laughs> and brilliant. So now... We'll just do a very quick two to three question sprint round, since it is the marathon we're talking about. One favorite runner that you love to see shot? Elio Kip Kipchoge, yeah, without a doubt. He's a gazelle, without a doubt. he's just gone. He's, and also he's a lovely, lovely man as well. Really nice man. I'm very privileged to have met him and spent an evening with him. This is true. I had this opportunity two years ago in Delhi, in fact. And yeah, that's I think, right. Yeah, he was in Delhi, yes. This is exactly. brilliant. Yeah. So I saw him from a distance at the start line and I just saw someone, all of them were warming up. And I saw this one person from far where you couldn't see clearly because it was still breaking the day. But I saw someone running and I said, this is the best form I've ever seen. <laughs> and it had to be Eliud Kipchoge when he came closer. So yeah, he is brilliant. He is brilliant. What is the most interesting event or race that you'd like to shoot? Other than the Indian events? Any we, event. We have, we, no, we have, to, we have to take the Indian events out because I'm here in India. So, so from the Indian so events. So it be very obvious. <laughs> well, to be honest with you, I think Mumbai is probably my most exciting event of the, of the Indian events that we have. You know, we have Delhi and Bangalore and, and Calcutta, although Calcutta is an amazing city. Horrible traffic, but great city. Um, of all the events, there's one in Scotland called the Loch Ness Marathon, which is just a beautiful course. So any international listeners listening to this podcast, go to Loch Ness. It is a fantastic course. I think that's a good tip and a good takeaway because I'm hearing about it for the first time. So I'm sure there are many listeners who may And they might see the monster as well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but then that might help them run faster. They might help them run faster, exactly. <laughs> which is your favorite country? For shooting a marathon. For shooting, yes. not for going home to. That's the <laughs> next question. <laughs> um, I know you wanted me to only ask yeah. that one. But <laughs> to be honest with you, India, because I've, I've been coming to India now for 13 years, and, and I kind of started one year after Anil and Vivek started Pro Cam, or started the running fe feast that's happened in India. The Indians are just so passionate and uh, and I just think it's just wonderful that kind of the passion they put into their races. And I've, I've just noticed recently today, the number of people who are running down Marine Drive has just increased over the 13 years I've been coming here. So India is just fantastic. And I love the people. What's the country you'd like to go home to? <laughs> oh, England, <laughs> without a doubt. England. But are you accessible on social media or anywhere people can track you or your work? Is there anything that you'd like to tell the, the listeners? I think just contact us via the Marathon Photos website, um, okay. where there's a uh, questionnaire or customer services where you can then reply. 
and the message will get through to me. So request a, a response from there and I will respond immediately. Any one message that you'd like to give to all the listeners with regard to with regard to the sport or with regard to photography? One learning. Just just enjoy what you do. Just follow the passion and, and just achieve what you're hoping to achieve. Just be passionate about it. Just enjoy what you do and be enjoy passionate what you about do. It. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you exactly. so much. Thank it's you for pleasure. talking to it's me. It's a pleasure. Thank you guys for being here and listening. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and if you did, make sure you leave a rating and review and share it with your family and friends. Till the next one, get fit, get inspired.